Hey everybody, Christian here. So a lot of people ask me when they're, you know, kind of watching me work through Vim or whatever editor I'm using, though most days right now in 2019, here at the very beginning of 2019, that is mostly Vim. They ask me a lot about window management. And someone in one of my other videos actually just commented today and asked, you know, you use Vim, but why don't you use uh, splits? So what are splits? Well, if we open up Vim, I'm just going to say uh, Vim here. I'm running this in the uh, Ubuntu terminal here on Windows 10. And I'll just, you know, by default, I get this blank kind of empty document, not attached to any file or anything like that. And I'll use Control P, which is a file finder plugin here and go to index.js. So I'll type index.js. And inside this file, you know, maybe there's some changes I want to make here. This is just a React project um, that I've been working on. And uh, let's say that I want to open up another file here. So in Vim, we have the concept of, as I mentioned earlier, what are called splits. So I'm going to say, vSplit. And you can see I've made a vertical split here. So it's just opened up the uh, the same file again on this other split. And if I use Control W and then indicate which direction I want to go. So in this case it would be to the right. And so I'll use L to go to the right there. You can see that I've basically jumped back and forth. So, you know, control WL to go to the right and H to go back to the left. But these splits aren't necessarily, you know, they, they're kind of not intended to be the same file, right? So if I go back to the right split here and I do control P again, maybe I'll open up some other kind of file here, such as 404. So it's just another 404 page. Um, this one actually just kind of loads a goofy little uh, GIF here. And uh, this works okay. You know, you can have splits here, as many as you want really. And especially if you start using Vim's uh, buffer uh, kind of functionality here. So for instance, I'll open uh, maybe the readme here. I can actually do uh, the B next for buffer next and buffer previous. And I can hop back and forth here from any of these while still maintaining these two um, splits here. So like I said, this works fine. And you know, for a lot of people in their usage of the editor, um, this is you know basically all you would need. So I'm gonna put a link in the description to both the Vim documentation for splits, or, or maybe if I can't find good documentation, just like a good write up here. Um, so, you know, with the split and the buffer, kind of both of them combined, you can really get a lot done. So, why don't I use it? Well, the reason for that is that I use and kind of prefer in terms of thinking through how to manage my windows and how to manage my kind of editor and stuff like that, um, I use a tool called Tmux. So I've just closed out of Vim here, and what Tmux is is a uh, a window kind of manager. I think they call it like a multiplexing window manager. I'm sure I'm going to get this completely wrong, um, but basically what it is is a way to have kind of separate windows or tabs um, for any program. So it's not tied to Vim. It's kind of a uh, command line wide window uh, tool. So normally I could just run Tmux here. And you can see it'll open up. Um, seems to kind of done something really similar here. But if I look down at the bottom, I now have this new, um, you know, kind of thing down here. It's basically a bar. The way that I have it set up is kind of hyper minimal. Um, but additionally, what I get is the use of a new kind of keyboard shortcut, which is the uh, the Tmux kind of leader key. If you're familiar with uh, with Vim terminology. I'm sure that's a term that's used in other software as well. 
Um, so if I do control F, which is my leader here for Tmux, I think by default it is uh, control B. I can then do C, so that is control F, C, to create a new window here. So maybe for instance, I will, uh, you know, cat the readme. And then I can jump through these windows using my leader key. So control F, P to go to previous and control F, N to go to uh, next. And so I use this a lot. In particular, I use it because maybe I want to have kind of process or like long running, you know, maybe running the server. So, you know, I want to start installing all my packages here. And then in the other window doing control F N, I can jump into Vim here and actually start pulling up code. And so you might say, okay, well, you know, that's fine. You have your Vim in one window, you have Node in another window, uh, but what about uh, splits? You said this was supposed to replace splits, right? And it does. If I come back here and I do Control F dash, as in kind of like a hyphen here, um, you can see it's actually done a horizontal split. And if I do a pipe, that's that key above the uh, the enter key on your keyboard. So control F and then shift um, backslash, you'll get these additional uh, splits here. So you can do, you know, as many as you want. And it's going to make all of these little windows here. So this being one window, this being the second or, or split, I guess, three, four, five. That's cool. You know, in practice, I don't use that too much. Uh, that level of splitting. Sometimes I'll just probably have it here. I can jump back and forth by doing control F and then the arrow keys. So I've actually jumped up there. You can't see because that's kind of in the middle here. But if I press enter, you can see it's actually kind of making new lines here. Um, but the final thing I like about this a lot is I'm just going to make this one single pane here again is I can actually rename these kind of little windows. So if I do control F and then colon, I'm gonna get the command prompt here at the bottom. And I'm gonna say rename window. I'm gonna call this server. And so you can see now, um, whereas before it kind of said, hey, you know, you have NPM open, so I'm gonna call this uh, window NPM. I've now actually called it server. Uh, jump back over here again and rename this. to code. Finally, I'll open one more, you know, control F C for create. And maybe I'll just make this like a to do window. So I'll say to do's. And I'll just rename this window to uh, to do's. So now I have really kind of clear intent of you know how all of these different windows work, and I can jump back between them and have completely different set of processes going on. So this is very cool. The final thing that is really nifty about Tmux and why I kind of prefer it again, it's you know why use this instead of Vim. It's like completely overkill for just like splitting two different code files together, but in terms of a more sort of holistic way of thinking about your stuff. What I can do is I can say control F D, which is detach. And I've actually just completely left that Tmux session, which is, uh, you know, why would I do that? Well, maybe I'll hop out of this folder and I'll look at these other folders. The Git playground, for instance, is from uh, one of my other video series. So is to do app. So if I jump into Git Playground here, I'm going to use a little script that I've developed, and it's called nmux for uh, new tmux. <laughs> and so that was not at all what that should look like. But but if I look at nmux here, it's actually just a little uh, Ruby script. 
And basically, you know, there's much better ways to write this, but I wrote this a couple years ago and it works just fine. It basically gets the uh, current directory, which is my uh, my PWD, um, so source slash git playground. It grabs the last little section of this, so it splits on the slashes, grabs git playground, and, uh, and then it gsubs, that is replaces out um, any periods in it, so you can't have a tmux session that starts with a period, I think is why I do that. And, uh, and then finally, it takes a, uh, a directory um, and replaces it all together if an argument has been passed. And so what does it do with that? Well, first it says, can I attach onto um, an existing tmux session? So if the session exists already, then join that. Otherwise, do tmux new passing in dash s, um, the argument dash s, which is the name of the session. So what does this all mean? Well, it means when I run nmux, I actually get a new tmux uh, session, and you can see at the bottom left here, called git playground. And so now I have another session here for managing this project. I create a new window here, and it defaults back into that working directory of git playground. So that's all really nifty, um, but I don't really understand what this session stuff means. Well, if I do control F S, I can actually switch between my sessions. I can hop back into this. Not sure where that FN came from. But I can hop back into front end jobs. Of course, I uh, didn't use nmux the first time, so this is actually just called uh, zero right now. It's the uh, zeroth tmux session. Um, but I can also jump back, control FS, to get playground. And so what this does is it gives me a really clear indication of, well, actually a lot of different things. So first, um, what projects am I working on right now? Maybe I would go back probably and of course change the session name zero to, uh, to front end jobs, which is the name of that project. So it lets me know, okay, I have front end jobs, I have Git Playground open, I can switch back and forth between them. And it also gives me a way to kind of cleanly separate my work. So for instance, in Visual Studio Code, you might have um, a couple different directories open each in their own window, um, or you can use, I know, at least Sublime Text has like workspaces. I, I imagine Atom and uh, VS Code have that as well. Um, but as a Vim user, it's just a process inside of the command line, right? So I can kind of hop around between these. I can really easily um, say, okay, I'm done working with Git Playground. Let's move back over here and start work on front end jobs. And finally, with my window kind of um, management, however, however kind of detailed I wanna be there, um, I can say, okay, well, the first window is my server, the second is my code, and third is my to-dos, so these down here. And I can really be as kind of, like I said, as detailed as I want there and really have a window management system that is perfect for me. Um, which is great because, as I kind of mentioned at the start of this video, um, having splits open in Vim is just not quite enough for all of the things that I want to do. I want to, you know, run the node server for this project. I want to maybe have another window open where I'm doing curl requests to kind of confirm an API is returning what I want. There's all kinds of different things I want to do, and only a really small part of that, um, or at least not the... Uh, not the majority of it takes place inside of Vim. Obviously, I spend a lot of my time writing code inside of Vim, um, but kind of shelling things out from inside Vim um, that is like running commands inside of Vim is not always um, the best way to kind of handle this stuff. So hopefully that is uh, kind of answers that question. Again, a question that I get a lot, and in particular that I got um, on a previous video. So thank you to the person who commented there um, I'll shout you out in the description. Um, hopefully this was useful. Definitely check out Tmux. It is available on pretty much all platforms as far as I know. Like I said, I'm running Ubuntu on Windows here right now, so um, that might be kind of a particular case there. I'm not actually sure if it's Windows friendly, but clearly it is very Unix friendly. I first started using it on my Mac, and uh, it's really great. I think you'll enjoy it a lot. So thanks, and I'll uh, catch you in the next video.